Thank you for uh, joining me today. My name is uh, Scott Kidder. I'm a staff software engineer at Mux in San Francisco. Uh, today I'll be sharing with you some of the techniques that we use to treat uh, dashboards like code, which is of uh, particular interest to anybody who uses uh, Grafana. So here's the agenda for the talk. I'll begin with a quick background on Mux to give you some context about what we do. Then I'll cover the, uh, the monitoring systems that we built for our first product, which was uh, Mux Data, which we launched in 2016, along with uh, some of the pros and cons of that design. Then I'll share uh, some of the greenfield opportunities that we had when uh, building and designing our second product, which was Mux Video, uh, that allowed us to automate much of our monitoring and alerting systems, including uh, the deployment of dashboards. And I'll discuss some of the goals that we had for our Mux Video monitoring systems, how we've gone about uh, achieving those goals. And lastly, if we have time, I'd love to take any questions that you have, uh, either now or uh, you know, after the session. So some background on Mux. In 2016, we launched Mux Data, which is an analytic service for uh, video. It provides insights into quality of experience issues uh, on mo websites, mobile apps, uh, OTT uh, devices. So Mux Data is easily integrated into uh, any uh, web de uh, video delivery application and exposes metrics like uh, buffering or playback errors. These are things that we're all familiar with and, and equally hate. Uh, and so we provide insights into the video publishers themselves as far as what people are experiencing. So some of our customers include CBS Interactive, uh, PBS, uh, Vimeo, and uh, Livestream. So Mux Data includes dashboards with multidimensional uh, breakdowns in hourly increments. We've also got a real-time dashboard that allows uh, our customers to monitor individual video views as they're happening. So our experience is building Mux Data uh, lets us see that it's still very difficult to deliver good video over the internet. And so that led us to um, develop Mux Video, which uh, makes publishing internet video as simple as making a REST API call. Uh, so you give us the source URL to your content. We'll download that content, uh, inspect it, select the optimal encoding settings for that content uh, based on the nature of the video, uh, and transcode it, package it for delivery, and make it available over uh, global CDNs. So um, our customers rely on us to deliver and provide uh, operational visibility into their streams. And so for that reason, internal monitoring of our own services is absolutely critical. So let's talk about some of the monitoring systems that we built for Mux Data. Um, so we'll rewind to an earlier time. Our company was much smaller. The product offering was simpler. Uh, we, had, uh, we ran just an Amazon Web Services. We had a single deployment of Rancher, which is a container orchestration system. It's very similar to Kubernetes or Mesos. Actually, newer versions of Rancher actually run, uh, run uh, on Kubernetes or administer Kubernetes. Um, and so we had just a, a single region, US East 1, Single large uh, influx DB database that stored application performance metrics, single Grafana server, hosted dashboards. As you can imagine, it's all single, single, single. Very simple, right? Uh, and we use Telegraph to send application performance metrics to influx DB. So uh, the, this uh, highly simplified diagram shows the setup, right? So we've got uh, our application that's being monitored is sending metrics over statsd to Telegraph, and Telegraph consumes those metrics, writes them to Influx, Influx streams the metrics to Capacitor, and Capacitor evaluates alerting rules um, and contacts OpsGenie, which is our uh, uh, paging service. Um, and the Capacitor alerting rules were configured with Chronograph, uh, but all of our uh, internal monitoring dashboards were configured with Grafana. So things were simple, but uh, they were proved to actually be kind of difficult to administer. Um, so I'll, I'll start with the disclosure that this was 20, 2016. Things were a bit different then. Probably could have done things a little bit better back then, and we could probably do things a little bit better now too. Um, but uh, so we used InfluxDB to store time series data. Um, uh, both from like stream processing applications as well as uh, application metrics data. And we had these capacitor alerting rules uh, that were administered through Chronograph uh, because we found that writing tick scripts was kind of hard. It was kind of error prone, difficult to debug, and difficult to troubleshoot. I'm not sure if that's an experience other people have had, um, but we certainly found that to be true. Um, so we, but we had already decided we were going to have all of our dashboards in Grafana. So we ended up running these two metric visualization tools, Chronograph and Grafana. Um, and we had Chronograph really just to administer alerting rules. Um, that, so that's not exactly optimal. Additionally, there was no accountability for changes that people made to alerting rules through Chronograph. Right? So somebody could go in there, mess with the thresholds, or maybe disable alerting rules outright. Um, and 
you then have to remember to restore them to their original values or re-enable uh, those alerting rules. And I gotta be honest, there might have been a few times when alerting rules were left in a disabled state uh, longer than they should have. Um, so as we were designing and building Mux Video, we took a lot of those experiences uh, into account um, as we were designing this new system. Uh, so in 2000, late 2017, we began building Mux Video. Uh, we'd already done a proof of concept uh, deployment of Kubernetes with some of our Mux data services. And uh, we decided that we wanted um, to, ha to have all of the Mux video services in Kubernetes. The close integration between Kubernetes and Prometheus made it an obvious choice uh, for us to um, use for application metrics. So here's another highly simplified uh, view of our, our Mux video deployment. So we launched initially in two Google Cloud uh, regions, East 1 and East 4. Uh, we ran separate Kubernetes clusters in each. And our Mux video service has a masterless architecture. So you can make an API call into East 4 or East 1, uh, and the video metadata will be available in both regions. So we use a, a multi-region deployment of CockroachDB uh, that makes that, uh, all that data equally available throughout, throughout all the regions that we operate in. Uh, and video job assignments and event information are communicated across re uh, these region boundaries using Kafka. So we use Kafka topics, topic mirroring to mirror data across regions. Uh, and then we also have global service discovery with console. So we have a multi data center installation of console uh, that allows one region to know about services that are running in another. Um, and so all of that is kind of outside the, the context of um, monitoring, but we want to have separate uh, Prometheus and Grafana installations for each of these. Uh, and since we're running multiple Kubernetes clusters and we only expected to be running more, we wanted to make sure that we had a, uh, a clean, easy way to publish dashboards and alerting rules in a consistent, reliable way to all of these, these clusters. So what were some of the goals that we had for monitoring? So the first was uh, we wanted to be able to easily configure which services were scraped by Prometheus. Um, in the old system, we had to run a Telegraph sidecar. And so it was very config heavy. You end up running a bunch of Telegraph uh, uh, containers to relay metrics into Influx. It, we still use Telegraph to this day to adapt um, applications that don't directly expose Prometheus metrics to adapt them to uh, actually expose uh, Prometheus endpoint for scraping. Um, but we wanted to be able to rely on Kubernetes metadata uh, for automatic uh, discovery of services that need to be monitored. Second, we wanted to be able to run policy checks on alerting rules uh, with every build to ensure consistency and make sure that everyone's following our internal best practices and that uh, we don't end up with alerting rules in production that are uh, malformed or um, not desirable. So, and then third, we want to store the dashboards and the alerting rules right alongside the code that they relate to. So there's an obvious place where you go to change a dashboard or add an alerting rule. Uh, we also wanted to have the dashboards and alerting rules follow the same pull request review process that we have for production code. Lastly, we wanted to automatically deploy dashboards and alerting rules to Kubernetes clusters every time we ship code. Right? So you shouldn't have to go in and manually tweak a uh, alerting rule in production every time you know, the code that it relates to is modified. All of this should be automatic. We've got systems to deploy code. Why not use those same systems to update our dashboards and alerting rules? So goal number one. Configure, uh, easily configure services uh, for scraping by Prometheus. So we use a Prometheus operator from CoreOS, uh, which makes it extremely easy to um, configure Prometheus for uh, discovering services that need to be scraped. So here's a, uh, a view of the Kubernetes service monitor. Um, so this is just a sample manifest here. Uh, first thing you do is you configure uh, the namespace selector um, for, the Prometheus uh, service, service monitor. So we, we have different Kubernetes namespaces for every Kubernetes cluster that we operate. So for our US East 1 Kubernetes cluster, it, all of our production code might be in a namespace called like GCE-US East-1-Production, and a similar pattern for East 4. Each of us, uh, when we're developing locally, we generally deploy to the default namespace. So we didn't want to have to modify the Kubernetes service monitor for every, all of these uh, different Kubernetes uh, clusters and, and namespace patterns. So we just have it look at all namespaces in the Kubernetes cluster for scrapable services. Second, uh, we rely on Kubernetes um, labels to indicate that 
a service that needs to be monitored. So we, for a service that you want to monitor, just add this monitoring core label, and Prometheus will, uh, the Prometheus operator will instruct Prometheus to scrape it. And lastly, um, not all services run uh, Prometheus uh, monitoring endpoint on the exact same port or the exact same path. And so we want to be able to easily override that. So for the code that we write, um, all of our Golang microservices extend from the same, uh, same kind of base server. And so they all expose monitoring metrics on the same port and the same path. Um, but we also run a lot of third-party software that might not follow those same conventions. Uh, and so the Prometheus service monitor makes it really easy to simply um, uh, name a port as metrics, um, and Prometheus will um, scrape that port. So here's an example of uh, like Kafka service that we run. So you simply add the monitoring core label, and Prometheus will uh, identify all of the uh, Kafka broker pods that are running as part of this, this Kafka cluster and uh, scrape, scrape them for metrics. And uh, here's just a, a sample of the, the Prometheus web UI so showing some Prometheus targets that were automatically discovered and scraped. So goal number two was to run policy checks on alerting rules uh, with every build. So uh, we use a service called BuildKite to run our automated builds. Uh, so every time we push code to GitHub, uh, it triggers a webhook to BuildKite. And BuildKite looks at a configuration YAML file that's checked into our repo. And uh, that YAML file details all the different steps that we want to run as part of the, the automated build. And the very first step we want to be uh, a policy check. And so uh, that policy check just makes sure that all the alerting rules are, are well formed um, and follow our conventions. Um, there was a talk earlier today that, about the future of Prometheus, which included unit testing of Prometheus alerting rules. So I'm super excited about being able to include that as part of our, our uh, policy check. Um, so here's uh, Bash always gets invited to the, the party when it comes to, to uh, deploy pipelines. And so uh, we've got several Bash scripts that are used for policy checks. So, the very first thing it does is identify all of the alerting YAML files that are part of our repo. So we use a mono repo for all of our MUX video code. Um, and so our, YAML, our alerting YAML files and our dashboards are actually distributed all throughout the repo. Um, but during this policy check stage, we'll, we'll run a find command that finds them all. And then we use the Prometheus prom tool, tool to uh, check them and make sure that they're well formed. Second, uh, we verify that all the files end in a new line character, because what we'll end up doing is uh, taking all the contents, uh, all of these uh, alerting rules YAML files, and concatenating them into a single document. And so we just want to make sure that that ends up being well formed. So goal number three was to uh, store the dashboards and the alerting rules right alongside the code. So uh, we have a pattern of naming the, the dashboards as wildcard-dashboard.json, um, and then storing them in a directory that's a, a subdirectory of whatever the, comp the related component is. So the, the process for developing or modifying a dashboard for us is you go to either your local dev uh, cluster or uh, the staging cluster, and you work on your dashboard, and then you export to JSON, and then you just uh, check it into the repo. And so then you eventually submit a pull request, and it'll be reviewed and deployed automatically through our build process. A uh, similar process applies for alerting rules. Uh, so we have a, a naming pattern of wildcard.rules.yaml. Those will be um, policy checked and then also deployed automatically when we ship code. So goal number four was to uh, automatically deploy dashboards and alerting rules to Kubernetes clusters every time we ship code. So our, our build kite builds, they uh, they generate Kubernetes manifests for all the different services that we, that we run. So we generally have like a, a base uh, YAML file that describes how a particular service uh, is deployed. And then we build on top of that for each, each environment that we deploy to. So uh, we'll end up generating lots of Kubernetes manifests that are targeted at specific, uh, specific Kubernetes clusters. We want to do the same thing for our, uh, for our alerting rules and for our dashboards. And so what, we'll, uh, what we do as part of this build guide process is we generate Kubernetes config maps uh, that describe the Grafana dashboards and the Prometheus alerting rules. So there's one build, uh, build guide pipeline that runs our, all the builds for our MUX video microservices, 
including that policy check. Once that's done and you do a, a merge to master, master build runs, but then it does some additional steps uh, which then trigger uh, uh, the running of our, our deploy pipeline, which is a separate build kite pipeline, which will then apply the manifests and the con Kubernetes config maps to our staging cluster. Uh, and so once we're satisfied with how that particular build looks, uh, you can unblock that step the next step in the, the build kite deploy pipeline, which will then cause that's, that same set of uh, Kubernetes manifests and config maps to be kubectl applied to uh, each of our production uh, Kubernetes clusters. So here's a, a script that uh, shows how we gather the alerting rules. It's very similar to the policy check. Uh, again, you just find all the alerting rules YAML files that match this, this pattern that we've got, copy them to a staging directory, and then uh, we begin rendering a Kubernetes config map manifest. Uh, so we start off with this um, kind of a, a Kubernetes uh, config map preamble that includes the namespace of the, the Kubernetes cluster that we intend to deploy to. And then uh, we concatenate the contents of all the uh, alerting rules that have been copied into this uh, staging directory. And we use a Prometheus operator uh, to uh, which includes a config reloader. So the config reloader uh, looks at the config map, which is mounted as a volume uh, in, the in the config reloader container. The config re reloader container is running kind of as a sidecar in the same Kubernetes pod as Prometheus. Uh, and so when the co uh, config reloader detects a change to the contents of the config map volume, it makes a webhook call into Prometheus and instructs Prometheus to reload the alerting rules uh, from its own mount of the config map volume. Um, so a similar process works for Grafana dashboards and data sources. So we find all the dashboards that follow the, the naming pattern, naming convention that we've got, copy them to a staging directory, and then we use uh, the, the Grafana dashboards config map generator project at the, the GitHub repo that you see there, uh, which takes all those dashboards which are in that staging directory and it creates a uh, Kubernetes config map that describes all the dashboards. And then uh, we use uh, Grafana Watcher, which is uh, also from CoreOS, um, which again also watches the Kubernetes config map volume for changes. When it detects changes, it makes API call into Grafana to reload those dashboards. So um, what are some of the next steps that we'd like to take to improve this process? Because you know, I'm sure, as you all know, like, there are always things that you could do better. Uh, first thing is um, we'd like to run multiple Prometheus instances per cluster to handle increased scale. So the talk yesterday from uh, Wenting Gong uh, from Tinder about their deployment of Prometheus uh, was really inspiring, where they've got separate Prometheus instances for each uh, for each service that they run within a Kubernetes cluster was uh, is probably resembling the path that we're going to take. Um, we'd also like to switch to Grafana's uh, provider config that automatically reloads dashboards from uh, a location on the file system, in this case, the config map volume when it detects changes, eliminating the, the need for um, the Grafana watcher pod. Uh, lastly, uh, we'd like to more, uh, have more control over which dashboards and alerting rules are deployed to which Kubernetes cluster. There are some services that we run in one Kubernetes cluster that we don't run in another. Um, for instance, a lot of our billing operations or our CDN log processing might happen in one Kubernetes cluster. So we deploy dashboards to that cluster. But we also deploy those same dashboards to you know, another cluster uh, where those services do not run. So you have consistency, uh, automation, but you end up with a kind of a little bit of noise in that dashboards are not um, uh, narrowly scoped to just the region or the Kubernetes cluster where they, they apply. So I'd like to also give some credit to other members of the MUX team. Uh, Adam Brown is one of the founders of MUX, and he developed a lot of our early monitoring systems, including the decision to use Grafana in 2016, uh, which is stuck. It's probably the most permanent part of our infrastructure. <laughs> Um, and then Matt Ward was, uh, uh, he was a huge advocate for using Prometheus as we migrated to Kubernetes off of Rancher. And he helped build a lot of this uh, deploy automation as well. So uh, thank you again for your time. And uh, I'd love to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Thanks. Do you want to have a seat? We've got loads of questions. Yeah, of course. I like this. I, I really like this bit because uh, it lets me ask some questions. I've got some. Nice. I've got some questions. Before we get to those, I'm a big fan of dashboards as code. Um, yeah. 
using completely different sets of technology to you. Um, we generate our dashboards using JSONIT, um, and we you know, use things like case on it to build config maps to upload them. So I just, one of the things I find really interesting is you've solved the same problem completely differently. <laughs> well, it's, uh, Grafana is a really um, um, flexible system in that way. Um, and this workflow of, at, at the scale that we're operating right now, simply explore, uh, exporting the, uh, the Grafana dashboards as JSON, checking those into the repo works for us. Um, but having a more composable system like what you're, you're doing with... Uh, I mean, it's very, it's very similar. It's just yeah. a different... Yeah. No, I really like it. What could we do in Grafana to make this easier, make this better? I think uh, probably having... Well, being able to use folders for um, to organize your dashboards more effectively is, is, uh, is, is a great feature. Um, personally, I think Grafana just works, works great for what we're doing. Great. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. So let's, let's uh, look at some questions from the Slack channel. Uh, we're on GCon track one, for those who aren't there. So first question from Neil. How do you validate the dashboard JSON is valid before or during PR? PR verification in CI. That's a great point. Um, so our, our dashboards are deployed to our staging environment automatically. Um, and we, we don't exactly verify that they're valid JSON, though we probably should as part of our policy check. Uh, so that's. Yeah, I could see yeah. like uh, they're becoming like a Grafana dash dash validate or something. Right. Mode because with the, with the dashboards being JSON themselves, it's pretty easy to imagine a, a merge conflict uh, yeah, yeah. being mangled. Um, and so performing validation uh, as part of the policy check that is valid JSON would be a great step. Making this whole workflow significantly better and easier is something we want to focus on for Grafana 7. Yeah. Um, so yeah, any feedback or questions like or, or ideas there you should definitely let us know. So Matt personally has two questions. Uh, oh, and another one's just come in from Matt as well. Good work. Um, uh, he, he wonders if you're running uh, on EKS or not. Um, you mentioned Kubernetes a few times. Do you use hosted Kubernetes? Uh, no, we don't. We use uh, uh, COPS installations of uh, Kubernetes in both AWS and uh, Google Cloud. Oh, excellent. OK, yeah. cool. How, how's, how's that going? Have you had to upgrade any? Uh, yeah. 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 It's, it's gone pretty well. Uh, okay. Yeah. We, uh, we, we, run on, we run on all the clouds, but we like to not run our own Kubernetes. Yeah, we, we wanted to avoid vendor lock-in and, and really develop the, the expertise of being able to spin up our own Kubernetes clusters. All of our development is done uh, on our dev machines, which are actually cloud machines that, that run COPS installations of oh, Kubernetes. So our production deployment is really not that different. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so similarly, another question about um, validation during CI. Is there any way you validate alerting rules or Prometheus config? Right. So uh, we just run prompt tool check uh, to make sure that the, the alert rules are well formed. But as far as the actual um, alerting rules themselves, we, we don't. But we probably should as uh, part of unit tests as soon yeah. as uh, that capability is available in Prometheus. So I'm really excited about that. Didn't, yeah, you implemented uh, unit tests, didn't you? Yeah. So is that, is that all merged and good to go? And documented? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last three releases have had it. We, uh, we, should, add, uh, we should add some. Okay. So uh, Dan Doyle has a question um, about the scale. Like, how many dashboards are managed this way? Right, so uh, I'd say we probably have about, well, maybe 40 or 50 dashboards. So. You know, but as these things go, dashboards, the number of dashboards that you're running are only going to increase. Yeah. Like they rarely decrease. So um, and, and making this process uh, easier is, yeah. is definitely in our best interest. And like how big's the, you know, how many people within the company routinely edit and submit PRs to change your dashboards? Right. So it's a small company. It's a, a startup. So we're 20 people total, uh, about 10 engineers. So and would you say all 10 engineers have had their hand in this? Or? Uh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. excellent. Excellent. Um, ben asks, why have you gone with one Grafana instance per region rather than uh, one Grafana instance with data sources for each region? Right. Um, we found that it, 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 this is the simplest, uh, simplest approach for us at this point, um, but we could very easily go to a, a single global uh, Grafana installation. There's really no technical reason why not. Um, it it's just happens to work for us at this scale. Cool. Yeah. We um, internally within Grafana Labs, we have both. <laughs> we put we like to put one on each region um, because we like to keep the region and the deployment stack in each re uh, sorry the monitoring stack mm -hmm. in each region to be very similar. 
So we like it to like cookie cutter it out. Um, but we also have one centralized one. And then you know, keeping them all in sync is a, is a challenge. So um, Matt personally again asks, uh, would it be good if Grafana could reload dashboard.jsons from an external source, for example, GitHub? That would be really, that would be really valuable. Um, but I do, I do like the, the similarity between how we manage the Prometheus alerting rules as a config map volume um, yeah. and, and, and managing the Grafana dashboards in the exact same manner. Like there's some, some convenience that comes with having the similarity between those two processes. So uh, no, I'm, I agree. Um, uh, Niall asks, uh, can, you, can you do rollbacks? Uh, have you ever done a rollback, like if you've pushed a bad dashboard? Uh, absolutely. So uh, what we do is we have a, um, a separate uh, Git repo for all of our Kubernetes manifests and config maps. So uh, each time you do a merge to master, it, it renders all those manifests and renders all the config maps and checks them into a repo, which uh, when we do a deploy to staging or production, it's just doing a kube cut apply of a particular uh, commit in that repo. So if you wanted to roll back, you could selectively apply, uh, or hopefully globally apply, uh, all the manifests uh, from a previous uh, commit. Excellent. So final question. Um, how have you dealt with um, like the etcd maximum size issue, like 40, 50 dashboards? probably exceeds the size of a single config map. That's right. So it ends up spanning multiple config maps. And how have you, how have, like, what's the nuts and bolts? How have you implemented that? Um, it, to be honest, uh, that's some code I worked on a long time ago. Fair enough. Um, fair enough. But uh, if you have that question, I, I'll, I'll post an answer in Slack. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Great. you very much. I really enjoyed that. Great. Thank you.